talk has been titled as what we can learn about jati system from uh, jati puranas let me start with this uh, question of uh, the some of the early speakers of uh, today's uh, symposium have addressed the question of uh, how jati puranas are actually an answer to a discrimination that is already happening in uh, the social system and that is the line of thinking with which uh, many uh, anthropologists all over the world or uh, the people who studied the uh, caste system or jati system in india also uh, have been going my observation about uh, these cultural anthropologists who uh, study uh, indian data uh, is the beginning of cultural anthropology the claim was that uh, they are through comparative study across the globe across uh, the world cultures they are giving the benefit of a universal understanding emancipating from uh, a people from a local limitation of a frog in the well kind of thing so when you are a frog in the well completely localized in your understanding about your local culture then there is one possibility that you might start thinking that i am the greatest one my culture is the best one and then see come i am cultural anthropologist i am coming to you i am trying to tell you that you are not you are not unique you are not uniquely supreme there is there are other cultures of the world there what you think is uniquely supreme so uniquely great is there in the other parts of the society also okay that's a great learning that makes me humble uh, emancipating me from my frog in the well approach but now today the entire shenanigan political academic understanding that is focused on indian society today is trying to focus whatever they find in indian society as something problematic for example some discrimination or status hierarchy or uh, stratification or whatever they show as uniquely bad only with indian culture what is this if you have anything uh, if you wanted to contribute through cultural anthropology or any of the international academic disciplines to emancipate people from a highly localized thinking and you wanted to tell people that uh, this beauty of your society your self perception self image of beauty greatness of your society is not limited to you it is there all over the world same should be with what you consider to be bad in that society also so if you see any stratification of social groups then if you are a an anthropologist true to your discipline you must talk about various kinds of stratification all over the world and compare the stratification that you see in indian society in comparison to that don't make indian society to be homo hierarchicus i have this article with me by robert delich he talks about the jati puranas with the name of the myths of origin of the indian untouchables he is using the word myths of origin of the indian untouchables and inside the article he goes to repeatedly quote louis dumont and this louis dumont uh, he is a, a french origin anthropologist uh, who is credited for his book homo hierarchicus and this word homo hierarchicus has been used by uh, louis dumont to communicate the idea that uh, indian human beings are very special and these uh, indian human beings have hierarchy well ingrained in their brain as if that's what i am telling you as if this is unique to indian uh, human being 
this hierarchical thinking doesn't exist anywhere in the world. Stratification does not exist anywhere in the world. And they repeat it throughout the article, whether it is Louis Dumont, he tries to explain it and uh, how actually various uh, hierarchies in the society, the sacral hierarchy, power hierarchy, uh, money hierarchy, uh, wealth hierarchy, and others are compensating with each other. Probably that is the reason why the Indian society was able to bear with the stratification and all that. One problem with Louis Dumont is that he is going with only Varna system, not the Jati system. Uh, so he wanted to explain the whole thing in the uh, Varna lens and Varna gloss. So that is one failure of the whole book. But there is an attempt to understand. That's one thing appreciable in him, admirable in him, that why a system continues for so many millennia if it is so uh, weird and bad. So in, this, uh, in his attempt to make sense, he says, that various other uh, factors like uh, sacral superiority is balanced by moneylessness and powerlessness. And power hierarchy is balanced by sacred, sacredness, uh, lack of sacredness and lack of wealth. And wealth hierarchy is balanced by lack of sacral position and lack of power position. Oh, probably this is why they were able to uh, maintain the stratified society. So it is all in the Varna uh, paradigm that uh, Louis Dumont is talking about. But this article that uh, Jati, on Jati Puranas that I am uh, mentioning by Robert the Leach, he uh, repeatedly goes to Louis Dumont and says, oh, in the beginning, I used to misunderstand Louis Dumont. I did not understand properly. Now after studying Jati Puranas, I understand why he said Indian society is completely, it has ingrained uh, stratification in it and all that. The uh, basic problem with this is that the original claim of these international academic disciplines is completely getting neutralized by their claim that this is quite unique to a certain society. Let me come back to the question of Jati Puranas itself. He is calling them origin myths. Entire cultural anthropological discussion all over the world talks about myth as a category of anthropological analysis, and it considers it to be a sacred narrative, and it considers that to be a universal, it considers that to be a secretly continuing uh, cultural entity even in modern culture. There is a lot of study about how myths are continuing in Star Wars and other sci-fi movies and sci-fi novels and contemporary novels and all that. So you have myth as a universal and eternal category. And origin myth as a special category within myths is considered to be a universal category. So if it is a universal category, the origin myths, origin narratives that the Jati Puranas are also have to be universal. If they are universal, if, uh, for example, an African community has an origin narrative for it, and it has got its own mythological characters in it, then why should you look for a special motive of countering discrimination, etc., only in India? The self-esteem claiming, if at all it exists in a uh, sacred narrative origin myth, of a particular community anywhere in the world, whether it is South America or Africa or any other part of the world, that motive of establishing self-esteem or claiming self-esteem for its occupation, for its community should be universally common. So if at all there is a motive inside the Jati Purana of claiming self-esteem, claiming greatness of its uh, occupation, claiming greatness of its endogamous community, then it is sharing this feature. If you want to be true to your discipline of international nature, comparative nature, you should agree that this motive is common across the world origin myths of communities. That's one point that we should see. And another very important point that uh, we should note is 
that I have some maxims <laughs> to make, I keep repeating them. Stratification is not the defining feature of a jati. What will I mean by stratification is not a defining feature of a jati? For example, if I have uh, a community of uh, superintendents of police and community of uh, police uh, inspectors, and there is a community of police sub-inspectors, and there is a community of police constables, these communities are already stratified groups. Stratification is defined in them because that uh, group is a group of stratifiedly hierarchical position in the ladder of organization. Any organizational structure, wherever you have hierarchy, in a corporate organization you know, or in a government organization, you have certain positions which are already stratified and community of those stratified positions are already defined, the, the stratification is defined in the group itself, in the existence of the group itself. Whereas Jati is not such a stratified group because no Jati defines itself something like a superintendent of police or a constable. It defines itself only in terms of the hereditary occupation, endogamously by birth, acquired by it, and the hereditary occupational system of reserving a certain occupation as a right and duty of a certain community as part of the division of labor of the village. So this, none of these endogamy or division of labor or any of these things have stratification defined in them. But does stratification exist in, uh, among jatis towards each other? Yes, obviously, because you see a value hierarchy and status hierarchy attributed not just to communities and their occupations. You have always a value hierarchy. People, human being is uh, by nature, a person of valuing things relatively uh, uh, from one another. So there is a relative valuing that is the nature of human being and his relative valuing he attributes to objects and one of the objects he attributes to uh, uh, attributes this relative valuing is to occupations also. So how do you distinguish uh, jatis from the contemporary occupational groups? Contemporary occupational groups are choice based. Jatis are uh, hereditary occupational groups. So what do they have in common? They have occupation as common. Okay, so if there is a stratification of occupational groups that exists even today in the contemporary society, it is because of a relative valuing of occupations by the contemporary society. So that relative valuing of occupations, if it is applied to a hereditary occupational group, that is becoming stratification within the Jati system. So my argument is not to deny stratification uh, in the Jati system that exists among people in inter-Jati inter relationship. But to be true to your analysis of comparative study across the globe, you have to understand these mechanisms. You have to understand, for example, if you are a true comparatist, you have to compare occupational groups of the contemporary type with the occupational groups of the traditional type. Jatis are occupational groups of the traditional type. Compare them to the occupational groups of the contemporary type. That makes you a good anthropologist because you are comparing two types of occupational groups. Then when you are comparing these two uh, uh, occupational groups, then you are able to understand that if there is a stratification, if there is a, a status hierarchy, it is because of relative valuing of occupations that exist on both sides. When it is existing on both sides, then you will not attribute it to one of the systems. You will attribute it to what is common between the two systems. Then you would understand that stratification or relative valuing or status hierarchy is not inherent in the Jati system. 
it is there in the co-living of the jatis in a village because of the same thing that is happening in the choice based the contemporary occupational groups also and if a jati purana is uh, having a countering of uh, the status in society that uh, this uh, robert delige also talks about it is not because uh, uh, as uh, chaitra ji was also mentioning that that part of the jati purana is not the only part of the jati purana for example every jati purana has a portion where it talks about its superior position it talks about its superior position vis a vis the other jatis and all that but the other portions of the jati purana or the following number 1 uh sri lakshmi pedada ji i am able to see her in the audience uh, she is a uh, professor of uh, philosophy of law jurisprudence these uh, jatis have their own local code of law and in india the disputes inside the village are settled in two ways a total village uh, dispute settlement uh, system is there it is a village panchayat and there is a jati panchayat also it is the jati panchayat which settles uh, the jurisprudence issues the legal issues of a uh, code of conduct there is a charter and that charter uh, is part of the jati purana and when the panchayat sits to settle the dispute as per the jati code it remembers these lines because they are musical they are there in the form of song and easy to remember they remember those lines of the song and they say oh this is what it is said in the code of conduct so let us set uh, settle the dispute uh, as per the jati uh, culture as per the jati achara whether divorce is accepted or not what is the basis of divorce uh, between these two people whether uh, the property has to be distributed among the brothers in this way or not all those aspects are already ingrained inside the jati purana there is a charter and if you see cultural anthropological literature they have already talked about the myth as a charter of communities but they don't remember that when they talk about jati puranas that that charter of a code of conduct of the community is ingrained inside the jati second aspect that uh, these uh, things have is the achara the customs for example how to perform a marriage how to perform a particular unit a particular event inside the marriage of that jati each jati has a different way of performing the marriage each jati has a different way of performing the puberty uh, celebration each jati has a a uh, different way of performing the initiation rituals initiating a person into the occupation so all these rituals how to perform them those details are already encoded in the jati purana so when they perform that ritual if there are elders in the family the youngers keep asking what should i do where should i uh, hold the stamping uh, uh, pounding uh, mill and how to perform the puja where should i hold the knife where should i for example keep the lemon to the knife uh, should i hold it or should not i hold it during the marriage for all these questions the lines of the jati purana they because they are in a musical form they are in the form of a song they can easily recite them they can easily remember them and they recite it the elders of the family or the priestly person who has come there he re- recites it and says see this is how it is said that is why you have to perform this part of the marriage ritual in this way and it is uh, for example if you go to uh, the uh, madiga community which is a leather community leather worker community tanning community uh, it is uh, the universal indian equivalent is chama community this chamar community is having its own marriage performance its own puberty rituals if you go to british ethnographic reports during colonial times uh, their uh, appointed commissioned ethnographers have documented across india 
what are the puberty rituals what are the marriage rituals what are the other rituals that are getting performed at the time of british rule in detail for each of the communities and those rituals uh, you cannot say have been uh, they have been imposed by a certain community like brahmins on to them if you see the same kind of rituals across the globe you must understand that these rituals are common across the globe and having certain procedures for these rituals and uh, uh, those procedures being uh, followed by the community very strictly through the memory of the elders if it is a universal feature across the world that is what is there in the jati purana of madigas also it is not given by any brahmin or any other community these are universally naturally organically happening phenomena so if an african community in africa is able to remember its marriage rituals through its narratives african uh, uh, tribal narratives then it is the same that is happening in the madiva community also so this uh, kind of encoding the ritual practices the stipulations of the ritual practices the traditions conventions of ritual practices customs traditions norms modes morals uh, whatever they, they, you go to any sociology student he uses all these words customs modes norms uh, rituals everything but when it comes to studying jati puranas they forget that these are universal features and they forget that it, across the world such things are being being memorized mnemonically through music through songs uh, that they remember and the priestly uh, figures of that community whether it is africa or south america they remember these things and the elderly persons in those communities they instruct the juniors in the community so that the convention continues and the same conventionality that is encoded into jati purana exists inside the jati purana jati purana does not list these things just as a matter of fact and say oh now i am going to dictate to you the marriage which was no what happens is inside the story some marriage occurs and during the description of the details of the marriage how that marriage is performed in the narrative in the story people enjoy that something is happening there marriage of uh, say uh, a figure uh, um, uh, chennamalaya or uh, mallanna or birappa mallanna birappa are the characters inside the shepherd community kuruma in uh, telangana and uh, kuruba in the rail sima and karnataka parts and dhangar in maharashtra you you have uh, these characters mallanna is kandoba there birappa is biroba there yeah? so in maharashtra so you have these characters and that their marriages are celebrated and the details of how marriage is performed are ingrained inside the they are incorporated inside the jati purana and that is what helps them to know how marriage is to be performed in that particular community according to the deshachara if you want to use the marga vocabulary of the smritis smritis tell you that uh, It, it, these codes of conduct have a deshachara aspect and a smriti aspect also so that deshachara of that particular community how the that is to be performed what are the marriage traditions and conventions or puberty ritual uh, traditions and conventions or the initiation ritual traditions and conventions or the death ritual traditions and conventions all these things are incorporated inside the jati purana and they remember it and also the occupational skills of that community there is uh, it is also an encyclopedia it is also a skill training book for example in the shepherd community there is a whole description of how birappa or the biroba he counted the sheep he remembered the sheep and how he remembered from the horns and the shapes of the horns and the wolves inside the hair of the sheep and uh, what are those all uh, what are the features of each of the uh, sheep in his thousands a herd of thousands of sheep so those words inside the jati purana when the person hears he develops the skill of remembering 
a particular sheep inside the herd and uh, what are the ways in which grazing was done what are the routes that were taken while grazing the sheep from hill to hill uh, all these details are ingrained in incorporated in uh, a particular uh, myth in jati purana the whole narrative so jati purana is helping them to know their own skill also there is a skill training uh, or the knowledge training of that particular jati inside the jati purana so because they know because the jati knows that by learning this jati purana i am learning all these details that are required for me to live as that jati they give such a great importance to that jati purana again i am repeating this is common with other uh, narratives across the world also whether it is africa or south america also they have all these things the only distinction in comparative studies you don't only study similarities you also study differences and distinctions the distinction that you have in the case of jati puranas of uh, india is that they have another set of narratives with which they interact that is the sanskrit puranas ashtadasha puranas and mahapuranas and they draw the stories and characters from those puranas to articulate the same things their status their esteem their code their uh, chapter of uh, code of behavior their skill training everything that is common across the globe but to explain these things to articulate these things they have another facility here they they have another facility of uh, memory they have another facility of knowledge interaction that is coming from their interaction with the ashtadasha mahapuranas and rupa puranas again here this is another interesting question that we have to make the modeling of the the article that i am mentioning uh, is titled as the mix of origin of the indian untouchables so the picture that is created is that they are so isolated they are living in a such an isolated condition that the other human beings never interact with them at all everything that is known to the other human beings of india is denied to them they are denied all this knowledge but if it is true if there is such a absolute isolation if there is such a denial of knowledge and information to these communities how do they draw characters from say ramayana madiga uh, chamar communities leather tanning communities uh, jamba purana and adi shakti purana uh, they have jambavanta another point i wanted to make uh, because i saw in the question and answers one question where they said uh, whether they are true or not what you have to see is that the jati purana is drawing these characters and it always shows you that the claim made inside the jati purana is not contradicting at all as per the astarsha mahapurana also as per the upa purana also as per the uh, epics like uh, ramayana also itihasas like ramayana also for example the greatness of jambavanta that the jamba purana the madiga purana claims is not at all in contradiction with the greatness of jambavanta that is explained in ramayana <coughs> the, when uh, the crossing of the ocean was being discussed by uh, uh, sugriva and uh, other vanaras they explain how great jambavan is how ancient jambavan is how he has been living from kalpas and uh, how a particular chip of a hill uh, mountain got uh, uh, pierced into his knee that is the reason why he is not able to jump now uh, perform feats like jumping across the ocean and all that so this jamba purana is drawing from the facts of ramayana only you take any other purana vishvakarma purana Vishwakarma Purana is in fact drawing not from Itihasas and Puranas alone; it is drawing from Vedas itself. Vedas, Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, and other Vedas are also already creating Vishwakarma. They uh, they are articulating Vishwakarma, and Vishwakarma is a Vedic god. Vishwakarma is the name given to 
the universal sculptor universal architect and you have devanga purana and the uh, rishi that is uh, taken as the originator of devangas the weavers is also similar sculptor his name is also already mentioned in vedas you go to any jati purana the claim of uh, greatness esteem that is uh, mentioned inside the purana is not factually wrong at all so the beauty of this system of interaction between the uh, sanskrit puranas like uh, astadashi mahapuranas or itihasa puranas and the jati puranas is that the astadashi mahapuranas have already provided to the jatis all the material that they can use for the sp for example uh, if you go to the washerman communities puranam madivel uh, manchalaya puranam his uh, name is madivel madi is what madi is the word used by brahmins people think that uh, oh brahmins are always about madi maila madi maila but uh, the uh, originator of the washerman community is uh, madivel so he is claiming the community is claiming that your madi your hygiene your cloth hygiene is uh, actually it is originated it is be, it is the contribution of the washerman community we gave you the hygiene we gave you the cloth cleanliness cleanliness of the clothes and that is getting connected to daksha yagna as uh, professor subacharya was already mentioning and the virabhadra is uh, supposed to become madivel you have in tamil uh, words like tangavel and where you have the word vel for weapon so this madivel is coming from the dravidian word vel so you have madivel and uh, the originator of uh, this community is called madivel manchalaya uh, traditionally in villages uh, if uh, you address any washerman person as madivelaya they used to be, feel very happy because uh, you are addressing him as the incarnation of virabhadra himself so that is actually giving them a self esteem that they are the hygiene givers madi givers to the whole uh, community the whole uh, human society so the uh, the point that you can see is that the interaction between ashtadasha mahapuranas and jati puranas is the distinction here and that distinction is coming from the already facilitated facilities inside the veda mantras uh, brahmanas aranyakas upanishads and itihasas and puranas they are already providing the mechanism for self esteem and none of the jati puranas can be contradicted factually for example if you go to jamba puranam whatever greatness that is attributed to jambavanta it is not contradicted by any itihasa or purana it is there inside the itihasa and puranas and they go to adishakti and all the greatness of adishakti is there in shaktaya puranas and shakti uh, inside the puranas or devi bhagavatam or whatever they are they just connected so if if at all you consider this to be an argument of the jati with those who are discriminating against uh, their traditional occupation they are doing it on the basis of the already available characters and the motives and narratives inside the astadasha mahapurana so they are using that and the universal stratification that exists for example as hale uh, kalyan ji as rightly pointed out you have the same work in choice based occupational grouping of contemporary society you have the same work in a hereditary uh, occupational group society also for example the hair cutting occupation beautician occupation beautician occupation is common between choice based beautician role and hereditary beautician role also but what the jati purana is doing is it is bringing a self esteem in the beautician activity which doesn't exist in a contemporary choice based society because along with the choice based attitude of occupational groups we have desacralized everything 
we in the name of rationalizing in the name of bringing science uh, what we have done is we have called the, all we have left all these occupations to themselves and the occupational groups have to fend themselves at least in the form of uh, discrimination if the society looks at them looks down at them they have no way to answer but the inside the traditional uh, occupational system of jati there is a provision of uh, uh, interacting with the uh, itihasas and puranas drawing from vedas drawing from upanishads they can argue and they can say that oh guy if you are looking down at me it's you are wrong because you are self contradicting you are respecting your purana you are respecting your ashtadasha mahapuranas and your own ashtadasha mahapuranas have this character which is similar to me who is performing the same activity like me and there you don't discriminate against him you don't look down upon him but you look down upon me here in this world in this earthly world why do you do that so they are able to do that they are able to argue through the jati purana and use the ashtadasha uh, mahapurana upapurana itihasa purana veda brahmana aranyaka upanishad literature that has provided all the facilities for them to argue that way and they are not making any factually wrong claims at all they if you if they have a claim in a jati purana of the superiority of a particular you have mutrasi a community they take uh, yadu as their beginner and uh, how why yadu was such a uh, great person they draw for mahabharata that is why pandavu lollu the performing community they narrate only mahabharata as the mutras communities uh, narrated and you go to any of these the interaction between sanskrit puranas and the uh, jati puranas uh, is giving them the facility of arguing that way so what you are able to see is that there is a system of hereditary occupations endogamous groups of hereditary occupations uh, aimed at professional skills through home training from the birth in that occupation whether that is right or wrong there are merits and demerits of that system if you if it is choice based you have a choice to move from uh, one level of uh, discrimination to one level of uh, stratification to the other level if it is hereditary you have no such choice it is a demerit of that system that's a different matter but as long as that system subs- subsisted as long as that system existed how did it continue itself if you want to understand you have to go to jati puranas what jati puranas have been doing how jati puranas have been providing that uh, code of conduct uh, jurisprudence law uh, ritual uh, stipulations everything that the community requires they preserved inside the jati purana and memorizing through mnemonics through, through music through performance through repeated watching of these performances how they preserved their Uh, culture in all aspects not just the occupational skills but including the occupational skills how they preserved it through jati puranas uh, comes out through the understanding then if you are a true anthropologist if you are a true sociologist if you want to understand uh, indian society and uh, you want to make sense of oh how such a weird system could exist for such a long time for millennia then go to these jati puranas this is a source which uh, provides you clue as to how that was uh, possible how the communities uh, hereditary occupational endogamous uh, communities existed and how your question as natural question logical question is if a particular occupation is uh, menial uh such menial occupations exist even in today's choice based uh, uh, occupational groups certain persons even today by job by application they get employed in jobs which are looked down upon by the society these are considered to be menial even in choice based uh, contemporary social grouping but uh, your curiosity as a a uh, contemporary anthropologist trying to understand how a person was able to continue 
in the hereditary occupational groups by birth endogamous uh, groups when they naturally give them some discrimination in the society then the answer comes from the jati purana uh, jati purana is telling you that their own self image their own as uh, ale kalyan ji was also alluding to the self image is not that of uh, lower status they enjoy their uh, occupation they look at their occupation as something great and that self image they are contradicting with the uh, image by others if uh, they are looking down upon them they are interacting with them for that interaction what they are using is the sanskrit puranas only the characters that they are drawing from there so this interaction between uh, sanskrit narratives the sanskrit puranas and the jati puranas that is happening is a very interesting interaction if you are a researcher true to your salt do it that way try to understand what is happening there if you don't like such a stratific stratified society uh, okay in anyone doesn't like actually in hinduism uh, pandita has been defined as someone who sunichaiva asya pake cha samadarshana sunichaiva asya pake cha pandita samadarshina so the goal of uh, becoming pandita a learned person an enlightened person is to get that equanimity that helps you to overcome discrimination overcome discriminating others your nature of discriminating other human beings as lower or higher or something like that that is your goal vedantic goal uh, from books like bhagavad gita so at least that goal is there uh, uh, whereas in the other societies they in the contemporary choice based occupational grouping that happens all over the world that equanimity is just lip sympathy they keep talking about egalitarian thinking egalitarian thinking but what is the psychological personality development that gives you such an egalitarian thinking there is a whole system of vedanta which tells you how to overcome the mentality of discriminating others and becoming pandita become a sthita pragna so that shuni chaiva asya pake cha you have samadarshan so that is a different thing but after all human beings who are not pandita who are not sthita pragna they are in dwandvas that is why they have this discrimination when there is a discrimination which is a fact of life which is reality they, when there is a, a stratification then people interact when they interact they have mechanisms of doing how they are uh, arguing uh, with each other with regard to such a cross ethnic attitudes cross uh, jati attitudes uh, i used the word cross ethnic because it's a universal anthropological word they talk about cross ethnic attitudes cross ethnic slur cross ethnic uh, comments they are there all over the world so there are cross ethnic dialogues there are cross ethnic attitudes but how these cross ethnic attitudes are being articulated through jati purana uh, is a very rich amount of data that is available for someone who wants to make sense of this intriguing aspect of a particular society where uh, unlike in the case of uh, africa or south america uh, my maxim one of the maxims i make is that caste is a tribe which lives in association and tribe is a caste which lives in isolation so we are going to hear after me uh, sri sumanaspati reddy garu uh, uh, comparing tribe and the caste um, in his uh, presentation and uh, you have this uh, uh, maxim from me that tribe is a caste which lives in isolation and the caste is a tribe which lives in association so when you are living in association the cross ethnic attitudes inter ethnic inter group attitudes inter cultural attitudes are very much possible and how those inter cultural attitudes are being argued again about or argued against through jati puranas is also a very important aspect through which you can understand how the society Uh, with such a system like uh, jati which is uh, uh, as i have been repeatedly telling you 
a, a different system than choice-based occupational grouping that happens in a contemporary society. Its uh, specificity is that it is a hereditary occupational group of endogamous groups meant for professional rather than amateur training of skills right from birth at home. So that grouping, how uh, it has been maintaining uh, its culture while being a highly enclosed culture within itself, protecting and preserving and conserving its traditions and highly in association with the other communities, how it has been interacting. That's an interesting uh, sociological and anthropological inquiry for an answer, Jati Puranas are the rich resource of investigation and material and evidence. Thank you very much.